All right. So unfortunately, um, excuse me. Um, my headset got lost in transition here, and I'm a little under the weather, so I can't, I'm having a hard time finding it. So I'm just going to do it. So when I write, you're going to hear a little bit of scratching sound, um, but we should still be able to figure out what's going on here. So problem number one: What is the slope of the line through three nine and x y for y equals x squared and x equaling two point nine seven? So Essentially, what this problem is asking is just saying, hey, evaluate f of 2.97, um, which would be 2.97 squared, and then find the slope. Okay, so the slope would be, um, our slope would be y2, which would be 2.97, minus the point they want us to compare it to, which would be 3, 9, divided by um, the x values of... 2.97 minus 3, and we get whatever value we get there, who cares. Um, so then they want you to do the same thing for 3.001, and then they want you to do the same, same thing for 3 plus h. So the 3.001, 3.001 squared minus 9, divided by 2.97 minus 3, excuse me, not 2.97, not that. 3.001. There we go. And that's going to equal some number. So what's the big idea? What are they trying to get you to think about? Well, the whole thing we're developing from 2.1 going forward was the whole definition of derivative. Limit as h approaches 0, but since we're in 2.1, we don't know about that yet. So they're just saying find the slope um, where x is 3 plus h. So it's 3 plus h squared minus 9 divided by 3 plus h minus 3. And those 3s are going to subtract. Um, this 3 subtracts with that 3, leaving with just h in the denominator. And we are pretty familiar with this now. 3 plus h squared minus 9 divided by h should look pretty familiar. And, oops, they got some scratches over here. It's playing with. Uh, so then, now the big idea, we want to try and simplify as much as we can. So we square that through, so that would be 9 plus 6h plus h squared minus 9 divided by h. Those subtract, leaving us with um, 6h plus h squared. Factor out the h, we leave us with 6 plus h. Um, and there you go. And, excuse me, that's not quite right. I goofy eat something up. No, I didn't. We're fine. I was expecting to see an x, but then I remember the problem told us to start with 3 plus h. So, therefore, this is what we get. Fantastic. Okay, so what was the big idea in problem number one? What are they What are they trying to get you to remember for the test? Just average rate of change. How do you calculate it? It's just slope. And it should look familiar because it's the same thing as the formal definition of derivative, except just missing the limit stuff. Okay, problem number two. Um... This is the exact same thing we just did over here. What is the average velocity of a car from t equals 0 to t equals 30 seconds? Um, so how do you calculate average velocity? How do you calculate average velocity? Well, that's average rate of change. Velocity is just another word for speed. Speed is another word for rate of change. So we're going to go ahead and um, just do more slopes. So they want to know the average rate of change from t equals 0 to t equals 30. Well, t equals 0 is right there t equals 30 is right there. So the average rate of change looks like a line connecting them. The slope of that line is the average speed that this person traveled the whole time. So therefore, slope equals um, y2, so that's 300, minus 0 over y2 minus y1 over x2, which would be 30 minus 0. So that's equal to 300 over 30, which is the same thing as the zeros would divide, leaving us with 10. Um, don't forget your units. This is feet per second. So this would be 10 feet per second. Okay. Um, so now doing the exact same problem, but now the problem instead of doing, doing 0 to 30, now the problem wants it 10 to 30. So therefore that average rate of change would be, all right, so we find the value for 10 right there. So therefore um, this would be the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that's going to give us uh, 200 over 20, which equals 
uh, done. Um, and so if we look at average rate of change, you should see the slope. Well, anyway, don't worry about it too much, but that's the big idea. So again, it's 10 feet per second. The average did not change going from zero to there, so which tells you the slope of this line is about the same as the slope, average rate of change slope. Um, how fast was the car traveling at t equals 10 seconds? So now, to figure out how fast it was traveling, are we talking at a particular time? Are we talking an average rate of change anymore? No, we're talking instantaneous rate of change. So therefore, therefore, how are we going to calculate that? Well, how do we calculate instantaneous rate of change? We could use the derivative, but we, since we don't know that yet, um, this is where we went to the tangent line. So t equals 10, kind of, you can kind of sketch a tangent line, extend it out, and say, okay, it looks like I have a point. Well, I know one point right is the point we're looking at, 10 comma 100. And it looks like we've got another point that'd be on this line right about there, which would be um, 5 comma 0. So if we want to know the instantaneous rate of change or the speed it was traveling right there at 10, 10 seconds, um, here we go again, slope equals um, 100 minus 0 over 10 minus 5. So that gives us 100 over 5, which is 20. So right at that point, you'd say it is 20 feet per second. Um, and rinse and repeat. Do the same thing for 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And what you should notice, you should start making predictions at 20 seconds. What kind of slope do you have here? Um, steeper, less steep, positive, negative. Um, to me, it looks totally horizontal, so it'd be zero. And 30 seconds, very steep slope. So what kind of, and it's positive, so you should expect um, big positive values. Say they're going fast. Um, so what does the horizontal part of the graph between 15 and 20 seconds mean? So we've talked about this several times in class. The big idea from that, what we want you to remember is horizontal tangent line, just think about the slope of this line, is zero. So think about your units. We'd be talking about in feet per second feet per second. So if someone told you they're going zero feet per second, what does that mean? It means they're standing still. There you go. Um, so they were no, they were not um, increasing or decreasing the distance. Um, let's see, it's the distance the car from a measuring position located on the edge of a straight road. So this, they weren't getting any further away from it. They're staying the same distance. So I guess it does not mean they actually had to be standing still, um, just if you wanted to think about this. If there's your thing you're measuring from and you're orbiting it, your distance would always be, if it was pretend I can draw a circle, the distance would always be the same distance. So therefore, your your derivative would be zero, but you actually are moving as you travel around this circle. You're just never getting further away from the middle part. But anyway, um, so what does it mean here? It means it's not getting any further or closer to this measuring post. Um, and then let's see. What does the, the negative velocity at t equals 25 seconds mean? So if you have negative velocity, it must mean it's problem has a mistake, right? No, 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 no. It, so if b, so go back to just the meaning, excuse me, so just go back to the meaning, and this says it's a measuring position located on the edge of a road. So if it's negative, if it, you're easier distance away from it, and it's negative, it means you are getting closer to it. That's all. Okay, I um, hope that helped. Happy studying.